Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Before we talk about anything, thank you so much to those of you that have subscribed recently. There was a little bump in subscriber count. Many of you came over from my other channel, Veronica Says, and I appreciate you being over here. Hope you enjoy this content. I warned you, it's gonna be chatty over here on this side, so we hope that you are into it. So for today's video, I just wanna review a few of the shows and books that I've been into, share what's been on my makeup tray that has worked and not worked. And I don't think I'm going to do a new tray for this week because I'm traveling for three days out of the week. I don't think I'm going to do makeup on the days that I'm not traveling. It's going to be a really hectic week. So uh, I'm going to keep the makeup for this week light and just travel based. So maybe I'll show you what I stick in my travel bag. So let's take a look at the tray. So first of all, let me say that I finally did pick up this little tray from Amazon. Oh my gosh, how embarrassing. Let me get my Invisalign out of the shot. Sorry, gross. I mean, I guess it's not gross. It's like braces or whatever, but anyway. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. Okay, this came off of Amazon and I don't love this. It looked a lot prettier in the listing. I maybe will put the listing up here so you can see what it looked like. And then when it came, it's like this almost like did anybody have or maybe you still do have laminate flooring from the 70s i grew up in an apartment in new york and we had laminate flooring it looks like the, the laminate flooring so anyway i'm having like flashbacks from my childhood and i wanted the sides to come up just maybe like a couple of inches more i really didn't look at that very closely in the listing so anyway that's my fault so here we go here's the tray for the week so what did not work first of all can we just ban little travel sized things like this this is the mascara this is Lash Brag from Anastasia, and I do like the wand on it. It's a beautiful hourglass wand, but the size of, this is what happens when you try to film with one hand. Forgive me, friends. The size of the, <laughs> the wand overall. So the shape of it is great. This sort of, it's kind of, it's a little bit hourglass, but it's so tiny that when you go to put it on your eyelashes, anyway, it just didn't work. It was not easy to handle. So I honestly, I'm just gonna throw that out. I'm not loving the telescopic L'Oreal mascara either. I'm going to continue to use it for maybe another week or two, but I don't I don't love this. Let me show you. So here's what the wand looks like, and I, I need more hair. <laughs> I need more wand on my wand. I guess this is for folks that have really small eyelashes. I don't really know. I don't have eyelash issues. I need something that's going to grip my eyelashes a little bit better than this did i just i wasn't i wasn't loving this how are you with this is this one that look at this and it's really soft like it it's a very flexible wand i don't care for that either do you love the telescopic mascara from l'oreal i think some of you do if you love this tell us what shape of eye you have and how you would describe your eyelashes that would be helpful so i love these little pawpaw sponges they are so inexpensive and they're so much better than the beauty blenders or anything like that i will pop a picture up of what the package looks like and maybe if I find a link to them on Amazon or something I will link it for you these are the best and you wet them and put your foundation and I use it for concealer and sometimes I use it for powder too I know I said originally when I was doing my makeup trays that I was not going to be powdering my face remember the whole idea of the makeup tray was to make my makeup quick easy and reliable in the morning and it was as a result of my dear husband saying babe you're caking on way too much makeup during the day and he wasn't wrong but I do miss my powder so this is the Becca soft light blurring powder it's a little another little travel size one that I'm I'm making my way through there's a little bit of powder left in there and so I just use it lightly though I'm not I'm not caking on the powder okay I'm not my eyebrow and eye what do you call the thing that sits above your eye eyebrow eyebrows my eyebrows that's what they're called my <laughs> eyebrow pencil the gimme brow volumizing pencil and then the kosas air brow gel i've been using just fine i don't know you guys i'm obsessed with these laneige lip sleeping masks i have them all over the house they're just they're a great consistency this is in peppermint and i'm probably going to stock up on these during the sephora sale you know i went through a period of like hating on these and going i don't understand what the big deal is and I, now i get it i love them i am still you all going through this butter bronzer this thing is hanging tough it refuses to hit pan i don't know what's happening with that little thing right there but uh, I might use this a few more times and then it's time for this to go. I might just put it in a drawer and use it as like a crease shadow for my eyeshadow because I'm kind of sick of it. I'm kind of sick of it. Scott Barnes Cheek Chic, Chic Cheek, whatever it's, this is called. Look, 
you can't beat this. You cannot beat this set here. Yes, it comes in rather unimpressive packaging, but these are fan friggin' tastic blushes. They are amazing and they last all day and you get variety across the colors. You can combine them. Like sometimes I will dip my, how you doing? How y'all doing? I will dip my brush into both of these, like here and here, and then put that on to get a different effect than if I just use one or the other. Other times I will I'll just mix and match across and then it gives you two little shimmery shades that are really nice as well. You guys, I don't remember what this cost. I wanna, I don't, I don't even wanna guess. Cheek, Cheek Chic number one from Scott Barnes. This is one of the best, 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 best blush deals on the market. Really good stuff. The Nomad palette from, excuse me, the Nomad Haunted Europe palette from Nomad. Cool packaging. I mean, it's a little, <laughs> kind of a little corny, but also sort of cute. I didn't use a whole ton of shadows in here. Here's what it looks like inside. I ended up using, I stuck like in here because of work. I think I did one day with these and I did another day sort of in this section here. I never did play with the greens, at least not this week, although I've used them before and I really like these greens. And it's it's a little bit of a challenging color story altogether, right? This, these are not colors that play fantastically together. You gotta be a little bit creative. So I did use that and still enjoy it. Shantae, she stays. And although it's not up here because I had already put it away, I did use my Sydney Grace Singles Z Palette. If you're newer to makeup, a Z palette is where you, it's magnetic, like the background here, this black stuff is magnetic and all of these little pans I purchased the singles from Sydney Grace and they stick to the back because they're magnetic. I adore this whole set. There's like, I think 48 shadows in here. I did a look over in this corner one day and then I think I did something over in here. And that's kind of it, that was the five days of the week. So these I've used before, they're just, I, Sydney Grace is the bomb.com you all worth every penny. So that has already been put away. I'll tell you what, this I this is not this is the what are you called? What what is your name? The Tom Ford Flawless Slow What? The Tom Ford <laughs> Tom Ford Flawless Glow Foundation. It's got SPF 30 in it. This is in the color 6.0 Natural. I would not have put this at the top of my favorite foundations, but it really came through for me this week. It's a nice dewy formula, a radiant looking. It looks very natural on the skin, and I would say it's about medium coverage to heavy coverage going on. I never did me a heavy. I just stuck in sort of medium. What I don't care for yeah, is this, the way that you apply it. See, you got to use the pump and yeah so that's kind of annoying I don't I don't care for all of that mess but the foundation itself was really really great I'm still enjoying my Shiseido foundations I have two of them this one is the synchro skin self-refreshing foundation and 330 bamboo I might wear this today I might wear this today I enjoyed my lipsticks I really wasn't loving this vinyl one as much as I thought I did you know with these kinds of lipsticks they are like almost like a liquid lip and you know you put it it's a beautiful color but when you put it on you got to leave your lips alone you got to let them dry and I'm just impatient I like to you know press my lips together when I'm putting lipstick on this you got to let dry or it will cake up and I didn't like the way it was caking up anyway enjoyed my other lipsticks I enjoyed the faux filter concealer from Huda Beauty that was great the Pat McGrath concealer is always a winner I'm almost done with my Charlotte Tilbury setting spray Tilbury setting spray which I re what do you call it I rebottled I didn't like the original bottle. The sprayer on there was too aggressive. So I put it in here and I'm almost done with that. I'm loving all of my skincare. My Kiehl's Ferulic Brew Essence is wonderful. My Clarins Double Serum uh, as a second step is wonderful. At night, I've been using the Tatcha Indigo Overnight Repair along with my Retin-A and with my Good Jeans, which I totally love. And my two fave <laughs> moisturizers that just they never fail me when i want it super duper uh glowy i use the super goop play and that has a really thick consistency and then my real go-to is the polish choice so all of these products did well this week so then for travel this week i'm going to keep it really really simple we're not going crazy we're going to take basic brushes maybe like two or three all-purpose brushes like a face brush and eyeshadow brush i'm going to be using my finger and maybe something to put on blush i'm taking as i mentioned before the viseart mink set 
Etan, etan, y'all help me with this. Y'all helped me with this last time. Etandu, etandu. <laughs> I, I can't win with the French pronunciations, but yes. So, and here, here is what it looks like. Oh, I just love that these beautiful brown tones I think will be great for all, all two and a half days that I'll be uh, traveling. And I think I am going to just take, this is called Capri Coast from Becca. Look how dirty that, <laughs> God, from Becca. But beautiful, uh, simple shade, not too dark, not too light. A little bit of shimmer. I'm going to just use this Wet n Wild, you guys. This is the Keep It Peachy because I think this tone... Hold on a second. Let me show y'all what I'm showing. Look, look at that. That's just like, that's a perfect, that's a match made in heaven there. So, and I won't be sad if this like breaks because it costs like a couple of dollars or whatever, right? And then, as I mentioned before, when you find something that works in terms of like work travel, you want to stick with it and not mess with it too much. And so I'm, I'm going with the House Laps Foundation again for my travel. This is in 300 medium neutral as many times as i've talked about this you would think that i know the <laughs> color by heart and i'm gonna go ahead and use the huda beauty faux filter concealer that i used this past week i'll take this with me too and this is in granola 4.5 a little bit dark in fact i'll use it today so you see what it looks like and then i'll probably get some brownish kind of um uh, you know warm tone lipsticks and throw that in there maybe even a gloss and just keep it simple i might take like a brow gel i'm not going to try to like do my eyebrows up because i'm going to be in close quarters with people and I don't want to like lean up and have people see that I drew on my eyeshadows it's my eyeshadow my eyebrows it's easier to get away with that when you are on like a zoom call or something because you're a little farther back people you know they don't see they just see the totality of it but when you're sitting next to someone looking at them I know I have done it when my colleagues have or other people have worn a lot of makeup sometimes I'm distracted by staring at the makeup and thinking about the makeup technique versus what we're talking about I don't want to do that to my colleagues so that's kind of it it's going to be a really simple little makeup bag like boom this is all going in one little bag with a sponge and a few brushes and a couple of uh, lipsticks and or lip glosses and boom we are done done okay we're gonna keep it simple why because we're getting too old for the drama y'all <laughs> plain and simple we just don't have time for it so let's get into getting ready and some of these things I've been watching and listening to that have been great I'm gonna use the milk hydro grip primer for my primer so friends before I even start talking about that other stuff you know the Sephora sale starts this Friday I'm hoping to post this video talking to you today maybe Monday morning so is it Monday <laughs> did I meet my goal why is this not pumping out it's kind of being a butthead um anyway so I will be filming and posting I'm gonna film today after this my Sephora recommendations video and I'm gonna do two I think I'm gonna show you what's in my cart that I'm actually gonna buy and what I'm gonna take out of my cart sometimes I think it's just as fun and important to talk about what we're not getting as what we are getting and so I have some reasons for the things that I do not want to get that I want to talk with you all about and then I think I want to do yet another video. So it's going to be a little bit of overload this week. My apologies in advance about recommendations I have for everyone else. Because my card is specific to what I need to re-up on for my own skincare and things like that. But it's different than maybe general recommendations for everyone else. And I think this is uh, courtesy of Karina. Hello, thank you so much. Uh, you made a good point. Tell us about the things that are really worth getting, which is a very different question than what are all the great products at Sephora? Beautiful, and here's why. Many of the products that you can get on Sephora, you can also get elsewhere. And uh, so for me, when I think about the sale and what's really worth it, it's gonna be things that maybe are harder to get in other places. Yes, every brand has its own website, and so barring that, right? that are harder to get in other places and where I think the 20% off if you're rouge is worth it. If you're not rouge and you're at the 15% or 10% bracket, you kind of have to make your own judgment calls about whether the recommendations I'm going to suggest are really worth your, your savings. And I will say this. Okay, so I'm going to go in with that faux filter. This is a product I would recommend. You know, some folks argue with the Sephora sale, you can get it cheaper on the brand website. That is absolutely true. Okay, but here's my thing, my own rationale. You use your own, whatever works for you, your budget, your style, your interests. I don't really wanna be running around 
to a bunch of other websites looking for their deals. Now, if you're the kind of person that's constantly getting emails from other websites and you're totally cool with just waiting for the brand website and getting an extra 10, 15, 20% on top of what the Sephora sale would offer from the brand website, go for it. So for example, Pat McGrath, when her, <laughs> this is interesting about this, you see how like golden colored this is? It's gold almost with like some peachy undertones. This is, what did I call this? Granola, granola. It has a really golden tone to it to me, which, you know, my skin right now is more neutral with a little bit of olive and pink undertone. So I look a little bit raccoonish with this on, but we're going to roll with it and we make it work as usual, friends. So Pat McGrath does 30% off site wide. That's always going to be a better deal than the Sephora sale. However, it's up to you to decide whether there's something you want to add to your order on Sephora that makes it worthwhile. You know, do you have the time to be running around to lots of other websites and waiting for sales? It's totally up to you. As for me, sometimes the answer is yes. And then other times I'm like, the extra five or 10% I'm going to get off of some small item. Like for example, the Pat McGrath Mothership palettes are huge in terms of price tag, <laughs> those are big dollar items. Yes, that extra 10% off at the Pat McGrath site makes a big difference in my mind to the point where maybe I'd want to wait for it to come on there. But if it's something like this, you know, this is, I think, is it 29? Let's say it's $29 and I can get 20% off, which is almost $6, extra $6 off on the Sephora sale for me because I'm rouge. So I get 20% off. Or do I want to wait for Huda Beauty to do 30% off site-wide, which I don't even know if she does or doesn't because I don't follow her website, then that would give me an extra $3 off. Am I really going to fuss with waiting for this to go on sale on her website for an extra $3 off? For me, the extra fuss isn't worth it, especially when you're talking about having to get up to a minimum on those other websites for free shipping. Now you're getting into like a whole different calculus type of equation that your girl is not into. <laughs> I don't... I don't have time for that. So you have to make some decisions about, you know, when is it worth it to save on other websites? Now, I did a little poll on my community page. Thank you to those of you that participated. Ooh, I don't like this color on me right now. We're going to bronze it up. We're going to bronze it up. I'm going to show you how to bronze it up in just a second. And then we're going to apply a second coat because this is looking very, very not good. <laughs> me right now I want something a little bit warmer what was I saying the community tab and I asked what category of products would you be interested in you guys cracked me up because a lot of you the majority said the majority said fragrance and I was like okay that's cool I think what I'm gonna do then is like when I film the recommendations video do the fragrance part first and then also use that segment for the other channel like post that piece on the other channel but then also have the rest of the products follow that. So if you're a follower of both channels, just know you might see the fragrance section twice. And I will not get my feelings hurt if you don't watch it twice. I look like a corpse. What's happening with the color tone here? <laughs> What's happening is that I'm mostly neutral and olive toned here, and this is too golden. So I'm gonna have to put on some clothing to kind of hide that, but look at my hands. So what, the other thing I'm filming today is the October Fragrance Awards for the other channel, and that is going to post on Halloween. So in a, over a week from now, it'll post. And I need to do something. I don't need to. I'd like to do something a little bit spooky looking with my makeup today. So we might be having a little bit of fun. You might see me make a complete crazy fool out of myself with the look <laughs> that I'm going to do today, but we're going to have some fun. Let me get something to bronze this up. So I've mentioned in other videos that I use these de-bronzy anti-pollution sunshine drops. I don't know what the anti-pollution part is. I have no idea what that means, or why it's called that, but this is from Drunk Elephant and the drops look like that. They're like a bronzy, coppery tone. And so you can mix this with those of you that are, you know, my skin tone or a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. If you're deeper toned, I don't think those are going to help you at all if you want it like a darker tone. But you see how it makes it a little bit more bronzy in tone? Now my hand looks like it has problems. Is that helping at all? Or did I just tell y'all lies? I think it's helping a little bit take like the golden edge off of it. We'll see when I bronze up and all of that. I might be wearing a turtleneck to hide all this. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> 
We're gonna make this work. I'm gonna do a pretty dramatic, like, contour bronzy thing. This is the Kat Von D, or I guess it's called KVD now. <sighs> Medium tan, warm 50. I can't see what the actual name of the thing is, but it's their little <laughs> bronzing liquid thing that looks like that. Okay, so bear with me here. This is gonna look quite crazy for a little bit. So if you're newer to the channel, I have this like obsession with audiobooks and with some TV series. So there are other videos on this channel that talk about all of the series that my husband and I have watched over the months. And I'd love to tell you today, my friends, about our latest obsession, which is The Godfather of Harlem. Let me tell you something. If you are not into this or aware of it, y'all, this stuff is good. We are on season two, maybe like episode nine in season two. So here's the premise of the entire series. The Godfather is Forrest Whitaker, who does an amazing performance in this series. He is, uh, the, so the series is based on a real life story of a man named Bumpy Johnson, who was sort of like this big drug lord in Harlem in the 60s, 1960s, Harlem, New York City, in Manhattan, Harlem. And it was him and the Italian, the big Italian mob families that were literally and figuratively fighting for control of the streets and the drug trade in Harlem and in other areas, but the series is focused on Harlem. And so Forrest Whitaker plays Bumpy Johnson, who is, you know, like the big da dada, if you will, of the Harlem drug trade at that time. But he's also this benevolent character in that he funds people going to college, helps people with their bills, gets people out of trouble with the drug money, if you know what I mean. This is like The Sopranos meets Harlem, this whole series. And it is so beautifully done in terms of the cinematography, the casting, the outfits, and the backdrop of the civil rights movement at the same time. So... The, there's a character that plays Muhammad Ali, for example. There's a character that plays Malcolm X. You don't really see, at least where I'm at in the series, much about Martin Luther King Jr., although you do hear speeches that he's giving in the background on TV. And like the producers of the show and everything weave together actual historical artifacts of the time period. Newspaper clippings, speeches on TV, other media from the time period that show JFK, I think, in the beginning, the first series, and then Lyndon B. Johnson, the signing of the Civil Rights Act, all of that as the backdrop for the arguing and drama between Bumpy Johnson and his guys in Harlem and the Italian mob families. The Italian mob families betray each other. They betray Bumpy Johnson. Bumpy Johnson betrays them. Let me tell you, it is action-packed. I'm not really into series like that. I hate that sort of like dramatic stuff where there's a lot of like shooting and whatever going on. But this thing has both of us hooked, hooked. The character that plays Malcolm X is amazing in his role. There is a character that plays Elijah Muhammad, who's the founder of the Nation of Islam uh, in that time period. It's, you know, there's controversial politics throughout, controversial religion. It's like everything. There's a love story that's woven in that's made up. That part is not based on, uh, you know, reality like the character stories are. But it's still, you know, you need a little bit of a love story in a series to capture the variety of audience that you want to attract. So we're on season two and we are on the edge of our, our seats. And when I tell you that there are scenes where we're both like, oh, my God, what just happened? It's that good. So like my husband and I, we went to a winery yesterday. We went out to New Kent Winery. Excuse me. We first went to something called Homorama. Do you have that in your area, Homorama? And it's where builders, this is going to look crazy. Oh my God. What am I doing here? I think I made a mistake. Oh, we're going... <laughs> I think I made a mistake. Builders, one minute, builders, like home builders, they put homes on display. And they show you like the latest layouts of homes, the latest, there you go. I wanted something like that. I'll clean that up in a little bit. The latest sort of decorating styles and all of that. So you pay a ticket and you go, like yesterday we saw five homes 
that were newly built with all of the latest gadgetry and whatever. And anyway, some years it's really good. Other years it's like, why did I bother paying for that? Yesterday was one of those, why did we bother paying for it? There was nothing unique or interesting. Like sometimes we leave those and we're like, man, that's a really nice house. This time we left those five houses and we were like, our house kicks ass in comparison. <laughs> so I think we'll just stay right where we are. Thank you very much. And I'm talking about like the first home that we walked into was 3 million. It was 2.7 million. And we were like, for what? What? No. It was just a no. Anyway, after that, we went to New Kent Winery in New Kent County. Really nice wines. My husband had a glass of beer. I did a tasting and purchased a couple of bottles of some really nice wine. So why am I telling you this? Because this is what I'm saying. <laughs> this is where I'm going. When we got home, what do we want to do? We wanted to watch more of The Godfather of Harlem. It is really, really good. Really good. So I would highly advise watching that. I also wanted to update you on a couple of audiobooks. So I think I just like, I think I literally just lifted all of that off. So I'm going to go in with some of this butter bronzer and try to fill in a little bit more shape there and maybe some crease color. With this one, the butter bronzer that never quits, friends. Actually, I probably get, should get a smaller brush than this. We know what happens when I use these big brushes. Un momento, por favor. Okay, I'm going to be smart and use a little brush for the detailing there and through the crease. This is the Scott Barnes number 61. This is also a Scott Barnes brush. It's his fan brush, which I really like. And then I have also pulled out the just, uh, what do you call this? I guess it's a crease brush to use a little bit later on and some other, some other brushes. Anyway, y'all need to see The Godfather of Harlem. So then, in terms of audiobooks, I finished None of This is True. None of This is True. Oh my God, when I tell you that I found reasons to drive around just so that I could listen to more of the book, reasons to do even more laundry or other chores around the house so that I could carry my phone around with me and listen to what happens in this story. It was so good. I saw some reviews that people were just not impressed with it. And I don't know what they're talking about. I really <laughs> thought it was a really well done psychological thriller. If you have watched Single White Female, the movie, it's kind of along those lines, but even more interesting. Lots of little twists and turns in the book that I had not anticipated. And I don't want to give it away because it's a book that I highly recommend watching. Oh, listening to, not watching. You can't watch a book. Although I think it would make a great movie. So it went by super quickly, super quickly. It's set in London. And I'll just say that it opens with two women going to like a pub slash restaurant and they share, they find out, they meet up in the bathroom. They like bump into each other in the bathroom and they realize that they share a birthday. So they start off being birthday twins. And I'll just leave it at that and say that it was a really gripping, gripping story. It, it starts off slow, like a slow burn. And you have to pay attention to the characters' names and the details. And then it gets really good. I could see this being an awesome, awesome, awesome thriller of a movie. Yeah, it was good. Definitely would recommend this book. Surprising twists and turns. Really good. Really good. And you become attached to the characters and your mind is twisted where you're not sure what's going on and who's telling the truth and who's not. So I'm going to look for some more from this author. In the meantime, I am now listening to a book called The Alice Network. It's set in World War II. I'm having trouble with the beginning storyline, having trouble following the characters and who's who. There's a young woman who boards a steam liner ship. Is that what they're called? Uh, traveling somewhere. I believe that's what she boarded. And she's pregnant but doesn't want to be pregnant. And she's looking for a cousin or something. And she ends up in someone else's house. And I'm a little bit confused. But the storyline is about a woman who becomes a spy uh, in World War II, if I understand the the description correctly, which I try not to read too much of book descriptions. I just want to see, do people really love this? Are the reviews really good? Because the more I read of the description, the more I already sort of like formulate in my mind what the book is going to be about. And I don't want to do that. I kind of like to be surprised. So that's what's happening in my book situation and my TV show situation. Now, I have downloaded this app called Q, Q, 
and a, a YouTube friend here recommended this to me and she and I are friends on there and have started to exchange ideas about other shows to watch. Do you have this? And I've also added in a lot of the recommendations that you all gave me. So they're like lined up to watch in the future. Okay, so then let's talk about, can I tell you about Natasha Denona and how she's pissing me off? <laughs> because she keeps coming out with these really cool looking eyeshadow palettes that I'm like, but I want that one too. I want that one too. Call This one is called Xenon. Let me go here so I can pop up the picture here. Immediately I was like, oh, I have got to add that to cart. Her stories are so creative. I don't love the variety or lack thereof in some, like we were talking about the bronze palette in a previous video. That one, as much as I love some of the mattes and the shimmers, they're all like a little close together and I may let that one go, I don't know. But the palette itself and the quality is amazing. This Xenon palette looks so dreamy. It's right up my alley and it almost made me think of getting rid of my beloved Jeffree Star cremated palette. What an ugly cover. <laughs> I don't I don't like this cover. It's too dramatic. Look at it. I don't need the Xenon palette. I have the Xenon palette right here in this. But this is what I'm saying. Natasha Denona, she, she does that thing to me. She pisses me off. <laughs> in fact, let me keep this out. I think I might use some of this for the look today. Um, and so, look. We're gonna use this Scott Barnes Mesmerize Eyeshadow Palette. This came out and then nobody talked about it. I've used it twice. It looks like this. So it has a matte black, a shiny shimmery black, which I think I may use this one. And then these shades that you can use alone or as toppers. So I think I'm gonna go for a really dramatic look. I'm a little scared because my little dumb dumb self put my base products on first. Then I'm gonna use these, which are probably gonna drip down my face. So. Pray for me that I figure this out. In fact, I may put those, I may put these protector things on. I bought these like years ago and I, I barely ever use them. Let's try them today. And they're probably gonna lift off all of the base product on my face. But these things that you put on like that so that you don't get fallout. Actually, there's two pieces that come off. I think I saw where someone left the bottom piece off so it doesn't stick to their face and just stuck on the top part like that. So let's try that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take one of these like packer type of brushes on that is slanted and let's see, let's see if I can, I'm going to, I'm kind of scared now. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm going to start with this one. What am I doing to myself? I don't know when was the last time I did like a straight up like black shadow like this. I'm gonna put one of these shimmery metallic shades on over it. I'm already skipping. You saw how it skipped over my eye. Let me just pat it on. I remember seeing a video a very long time ago. This was probably five to six or seven years ago where the guy was talking about how to do a smoky eye. And the secret being to keep the smoke low. Don't bring it up into your, that area there. Just keep it down here. So let me do that. Let me do a little bit of blending. And then I'm going to put probably a little bit of grayish white right there. And then we'll go in with the dramatic pop. So this is just a clean, this is Ulta Beauty three in one shadow. The brush number is called 40. And it's just, it's a pretty big, um, what do you call it, brush head to just do some blending. Cause I don't, you know, I did a lot of skipping, if you will, by dragging that brush across my, my crease. So I wanna sort of just blend this out and up on a clean brush. See how that like removed or filled in some of that skipping that, that happened. Also helps to start to blur the line so that I can come in with another shadow for a blending effect. Are you dressing up for Halloween? Look, this is gonna sound morbid, I apologize, but as I get older, I'm like, I don't know how many Halloweens I have left. I don't know how many Christmases I have left. 
By the way, can we pause for one second? One second. See, I'm already going to start messing it up. Let me, let me, let me chill. Let me relax. Relájate, Veronica. Okay, look. You know how there are some celebrity deaths that just, they just get to you? So when Robin Williams died, that one really did a number on me. I, I think I shared this in a video long ago. I remember the movie Dead Poets Society and it had such an impact on my life. Of course, I've been watching Robin Williams since he was on Hello, Mork and Mindy. So I mean, I've watched Robin Williams since I was a kid and I've always thought of him as like a loving, positive person. So when he passed away through suicide, I believe, right? I was devastated. I was like beside myself for reasons that are hard to describe. And so the same thing happened again this week when Suzanne Summers died. I was like, stop it. So very quickly before we go on, I'm going to pick up probably one of these lighter grayish shades, maybe this one, and kind of just blend up into the upper part of my eyeshadow. What do you call this? The eyebrow bone? Whatever that is. So my husband was like, Suzanne Summers died. And I was like, what? Chrissy is gone? Chrissy's no longer longer with us on the earth. I don't know, you guys. It just it messes my head up. And she was only 70-something, 70 74, 75, maybe a little bit older than that. I don't remember. I remember picking up her books, you know, when I was younger and trying to figure out my own health situation. I very much remember her talking about shopping around the perimeter of the supermarket, go to produce, go to meats. Um, what else is on the perimeter? I guess that's it. What's on the edge? vegetables, <laughs> dairy, and that's it. And I'm like, that's that's the way that I want to eat. And I know she had breast cancer and, and all of that. Anyway, I don't want to get into like speculating about the why of her death and whether her lifestyle contributed or helped uh, create longevity. You know, I don't want to get into all that. But man, when I tell you that hearing of her passing just devastated me. <sighs> anyway, okay. So... I'm going to go for it with this brightest one and try to do that like right in the middle. Let's see how that looks. You guys, look at this. Bing! In fact, hold on. Woo! Let's try that. We see you, Scott Barnes. We see you. Well, let's just do it all over the eye then if you want to go all over the eye. I kind of like that. That's kind of funky. These are really, really easy. It's a nice dry light formula and it goes on the eye super easily. So anyway, I don't need the Xenon palette, but you know I'm going to get it. And so I'm going to try to do the one in one out rule with my makeup now. Oh my God, help me. Which means I'm probably going to let go of the bronze palette. I kind of like this. I'm digging this. What do I want to do underneath? I'm going to leave it alone except to go in with something light at the top. I think I'm going to use the white in the Jeffree Star palette. I'm creating a mess. Stuff is falling into the sink. Lord have mercy. There. That gives a little bit more definition up there. I definitely want to do a false lash. I think that'll look good with this. And I probably need to do black liner on top and maybe something dark underneath. Let's see what we can find here. Well, I started by asking if you were going to dress up for Halloween and then started talking about death and left y'all hanging about that. I might go in with a color like this, like one of these. This is a warmer, warmer gray. This is a cooler gray underneath. Let me try the cooler gray to stick with cool tones. So, um, yeah, not that many Halloweens left. <laughs> Suzanne Summer's death affected me thinking, you know, you never know when your number's up. We get those constant reminders when we hear celebrities are passing away and all of that and family members and, and all I don't that. know if I'm going to dress up, but I think I am definitely going to do some fun makeup. And I have this like little Halloween headband that has like a skull on it and something like that. I have my pumpkins out on the porch and I'm that house that gives out the good candy. You're going to leave my house with a lot of candy. Ow! That didn't hurt. I'm being dramatic, <laughs> but it did take off some stuff. So I'm going to have to touch up under there. You're going to leave my house. When you ring my doorbell, I'm going to give you several handfuls of the good stuff. You're going to get the Snickers, the Reese's candy. We don't hand out raisins over here, y'all. Do you hand out raisins? If you do, stop it. Give the kids some candy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do what you want. Yeah. Ugh.
So in our neighborhood, if you want to give out candy, they give you these uh, these pumpkins, these paper pumpkins that you put on your mailbox so people know, hey, this house is willing to give you some candy. That allows people to keep their lights on, you know, on Halloween night and not be bothered. Like they don't have to go through all the trouble of turning their lights on and acting like they're not home and all that. <laughs> so that you know only to go to the houses that have the, the pumpkins. Okay, I think I'm digging this. I do want a little bit darker on the outer edge. So I am going to darken it up at the risk of having it run all the way down my face. And I need to run that then over the, on the upper eyelid. So I took this Flexitarian color from ColourPop. This is actually supposed to be a super shock cheek. I can't imagine putting this on my cheek unless like you're doing a dramatic highlighter. And I did that on the inner corners, which I really love. If I wanted to go super Halloween-y, I would actually drag the black like down here and look all sallow and whatnot. But I think I'm just gonna keep it mellow so as not to scare the heck out of my husband because it isn't actually Halloween today. <laughs> and I will be wearing this look through the evening hours before I wash it off. Let me finish the rest and then come back on and we'll do our final thoughts. I'm just kidding. I don't have final thoughts, but I'll show you the final look. Hang on. Okay, 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 okay. Here is the finished look. I curled my hair with a big a big barrel. I think it's like a one and a half inch or two inch barrel to get like bigger curls. Sometimes I do too tight curls. And I did put mega big false lashes on. I'm quite uncomfortable with these, but they're also fun at the same time. Cheeks are this, which is Coral Cloud Bounce and Blur Blush from Bare Minerals. It's kind of almost like a gel texture. And lips, I did uh, the Makeup by Mario liner in the color. This is almond. I don't feel like the color is almond. It's like a brownie color. Ooh, my lip is crusty right there. <laughs> And then the lipstick is the YSL Slim Something Matte. The Slim Velvet Matte Color in 313. I know it has a name and I can't remember what it is, but the number is 313, which is like this reddish cinnamony color. And I think I'm good. I did a really dramatic eyebrow with the Gimme Brow Pencil. I don't know that I'm loving this. I mean, I'm gonna keep using it, but I kind of like a finer point. This is a little bit of a drier brush and it's, it's kind of hard to use. And that is all. Let me go film my October fragrances video and I'm gonna film a Sephora video for you all. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging out with me. Take care, friends.